Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be preparing the MR2 chassis for the 2AR FXE engine install. The first thing you can do is replace this small bushing that adjusts the shifter center feel. This part comes with the custom shift kit. You can install this now or after you install the shift lines. The only difference is that you won't have to undo the shift bushing a half turn after adjusting it. I'm doing it now so that I can have a better response when I fine tune the center feel later. Next is the throttle pedal. This car has a drive-by cable setup, but because this is a newer motor, it needs a drive-by wire pedal. To remove the pedal, just undo the tool bolts to the firewall. Then you have to push in the cable slightly and pull it up from the pedal. You don't have to remove the entire cable, but it annoys me, so I'm removing a few bolts to access the pedal cable sleeve from the front trunk. You can pry it out from the firewall and follow it from under the car. Then simply unroute it until you reach the back of the car. At this point, it's a bit tricky, but try to wiggle it from the engine bay and pull it out from underneath the chassis. Now to replace the pedal. This part is not necessary to do, but it looks so much nicer to switch the aluminum pedal face from the MR2. It's just held in by a roll pin. The drive-by wire pedal is very common in most Toyotas, so they are plentiful at the junkyard. To install the new pedal to the firewall, you need a custom adapter. This just installs with two bolts to the firewall and then two bolts to mount the pedal. Onto the engine bay. Make sure that your left and right motor mounts are installed. I had to remove one of them when I took out the old motor. But you won't need the stock front motor mount. That gets replaced with the custom one. Next is the custom clutch line. I'd already removed the old clutch sleeve cylinder as this transmission does not have a clutch fork. Rather it is purely hydraulic. You just need two wrenches to tighten this line. And then the front side motor mount. And now the permanent modifications. First, you need to remove that small stud to not interfere with the motor. You also need to put a dent that is about 5 inches high from that stud. It's about 3 inches across and half an inch deep. This is to make it easier to service the alternator. There is also that area that needs to be dented in. This is necessary to clear the valve cover. You won't really be able to dent it in unless you temporarily remove the small latch on the other side. I'm not exactly sure what the latch does, but it doesn't interfere with the soft top even if it sticks out a bit. And now the ECU. I'm installing the mounting brackets so that I can temporarily install it in the car. This is so that I can position the Haltech to see what kind of clearance I have. I got an old ECU and took its back cover off so that I can mount my Haltech. Normally this would be the entire ECU that you could buy pre-tuned. You do need to loosen the relay box bolts as the brackets will slide underneath it. The mounts may not seem secure now, but there is a third bolt on top that gets installed later. I was able to get a rough idea of where I could position the Haltech. The back ports are not blocked by the relay box as long as the Haltech is mounted in the center of the back plate. After marking where the holes lined up, I drilled them and used some nuts and bolts to hold the ECU snug. Considering that there will be vibrations and that the bolts don't have much surface area, it's a good idea to use thread locker on them. The bolts holding down the ECU brackets were difficult to reach, so I had to use an extension paired with a flex joint socket. And back to the interior. The stock ECU is easy to access and needs to be removed to be replaced with the body controller. This is a custom body controller that allows the rest of the chassis to function with this swap, like having the AC and tachometer work. Remove the ECU board and lay the controller in its place. The middle two screws are difficult to align because of their size, so it's recommended to temporarily install the top screws, then the middle. Then you can undo the top ones and install the whole cover. Note that the bottom two screws will feel a bit spongy because there is no circuit board there, so don't over tighten them. And now just reinstall it in the chassis. After removing that side panel, you can lay the accelerator pedal wire underneath it. This wire can be made or bought. Connect it to the pedal after securely running it over the brake pedal brackets and tuck away any extra wire. The other side should go alongside the other body wires and be plugged into the middle of the body controller. And now the custom fuel line. This is easy to make. You need some Earl's VaporGuard hose, 3 8 inner diameter and 32 inches long. On both ends goes some 5 16 to 8 and 6 adapters. It's better to install some double ear clamps, but regular hose clamps will do just fine. If you choose to go with that route, you will have to put some sort of strap underneath the clamp so that it doesn't dig into and tear the hose. I just used a torn leather piece off of my old soft top. 
On one of the ends, you have to install and tighten a 5 16 to AN quick connect fuel fitting. I don't have it here right now, but install the version of it with the secondary retainer. You don't want high fuel pressure and vibrations disconnecting your unsecured fuel line and then spraying on the hot exhaust. On the other end, you would have the other quick connect, but that is left on the motor. That kind is the regular one with the white plastic piece, as the fuel rail actually has a retaining ring for that version. I'm pointing towards a small hole in the engine bay, directly mirrored to this is where you need to install a bracket for the fuel line. On the other side of this hole is just some insulation, so you can easily install a nut and bolt in there. I just took off my old fuel rail guide and bent it to shape, then installed it. You can also install another guide that would share the same bolt hole as the brake booster line. This makes it unnecessary to put rivets in the chassis. These guides are very important to have, otherwise the fuel line would touch the header. After securing it, you are done preparing the chassis. Make sure to have the car lifted as high as your jack stands will go to make the install easier. If this is your first time, it's possible to install the engine by yourself, but it's tiring and takes some time, so get a friend to help you if you can. That's what I'll be covering in the next video. Thanks for watching.